Hello, today we're going to talk about the singleton. Why would we want to use it and how to do it? We might want to make some object a singleton because it's easier to call those functions from that script. For example, that's the first thing. The other thing is that if we want to have only one instance of that object in our scene, then it's good to make it a singleton so that we are sure that there would be no more instances of it. If we are creating a game manager, we want to have only one game manager in our game. So let's create it just to see it on the example. I will just create empty and call it game manager object. And now let's add a script to it. So create and choose C-sharp script. I'll call it game manager. Let's attach it to the object we just created and let's open it. So we will see how the singleton is created. We are doing this on the very top. We are creating a singleton by making a public static and now we have to use the name of the class. So it will be a game manager and we have to give it some name. And this is quite common to give it an instance name. Now we have to check if there is only one instance of this object in the scene. If it is, we keep this instance. If it's not, then we have to destroy it. So we are going to do it in the awake method, which is being executed before the start method. So just start typing awake and inside we are asking if the instance is null, if there is no instance. So just type it. If instance is null, we use null with game objects, for example, to check if something is assigned or not, or if something exists or if it doesn't. So in our case, if instance is equal to null, so it means that if it doesn't exist, then we want to make this instance. So instance equals to this. So this game object will become this instance. And we have to check else. So if there is some instance already on the scene, then we should destroy the new instance. So destroy and then just game object. Save it and our singleton is pretty much done already. So let's just make some public methods so we will see how to call it from that singleton because this is quite powerful to be honest. Because normally if you would like to call some method from other script you would have to make a reference to it first and then just call it. But when we have a singleton this is much easier. In order to call it from other place we have to make it public. So let's call it public void and let's just print something in the console. So just print message and we are going to print some some welcome message. So let's do it and in order to call it we have to create another object. Let's say it will be our play object. So we just create it quickly. And we need to create some script for the player. And inside our player, let's say that whenever we click the left button, we want to call function that we created in the game object. So we are going to check it in the update. So if input get mouse button down and we are using the left mouse button, which is zero. And then we want to call this method from the game manager. So we uh, start typing game manager and now put a dot and now we have to use an instance. So the name of the singleton we just created. Instance and after the dot we can search for that method. So it was print message. It's really simple, isn't it? Let's save it and go back to Unity. So now if we press play and just have a look in the console Whenever I left click on it, now we get the message hey. So you can see that calling these functions from the singleton is really easy. We haven't covered yet how to call other methods from other scripts, but this is definitely much easier to do. And what else we can do with singleton and why would we 
use it. We want to use it, for example, if we want to keep it through the scenes. If you want to keep this game manager through the scenes, and at the moment we've got only one, so I will create another one. Let's create the scene. I will just type 34. In order to move it between the scenes, we have to add some line of code to our singleton. We have to say in this awake method, just after it is checking if there are some new instances of it, we have to add don't destroy on load method and we have to specify this game object. So this is that easy. Close it and maybe I will make our player a prefab. So just drag and drop it. So we are in the scene 33 now and we have to get some functionality. So we are being moved to other scene. So let's use our game manager to distinct between the scenes. And I'm going to use the right button click to move between the scenes. So I will use the right mouse button to move between the scenes. And we have to do it inside the update method. So we just change our start to update and then input get mouse button down and let's put one. We want to move between the scenes. So we need to add the library Unity Engine and then Scene Management. We are going to use indexes to move between scenes. So we are going to check if the scene manager and we'll get active scene and if the active scene build index, so build index is equal to zero because we'll have index of zero and one because we are going to have two scenes. So if this is zero, then we want to load scene one. So scene manager, load scene, and then we want to provide the one. And if we are in the scene one, so I will put else, then we want to load scene zero. So this is pretty much a standard conditional statement that will allow us to switch between scenes or some other states if we need to. So I just save it. The next thing we need to do is just to add our other scene to the build index. So build settings. And here I've got some old scenes and I'll just drag and drop it, close it. And now it should be working. So let me just start the game. And if I right click, you can see that we were moved to the scene 34. We've got our don't destroy uh, on load game manager object. So as you can remember, we didn't create any objects in this 34 scene. But now if I right click, we are moved back to the previous scene and we can move between them all the time. As, and as you can see, our game manager object still exist with our script attached to it. So we can have this functionality on all the scenes that we are going to move between. And we didn't have to create any of those objects here. So this is why Singleton and Don't Destroy on Load is so powerful and it will help us quite a lot. Of course, there is more to the Singletons and to you know, switching between the scenes with the singleton, but we will talk about it later.